Hi, my name is Nay Palakpak, creator of Fully Housewife, The Wiser Years. Welcome to my homeschool podcast. In this podcast, my husband Jay and I will be talking about our lifestyle and our journey as a homeschooling family here in the Philippines. We will be talking about what we do and what we do not do and how we raise and educate our three children who happen to be creatives and artists. We will be talking about our wins, our losses, and our mistakes. And we will also be talking to other seasoned homeschooling families to give you a better picture. So other homeschooling families can figure out and customize their homeschool journeys based on all of our experiences. Catch us weekly on Fully Housewife, The Wiser Years Homeschool Podcast. Hi everyone, welcome to Fully Housewife, The Wiser Years Homeschool Podcast. I'm here today with Marise De Ross, who is a UP Diliman graduate, major in philosophy and minor in family, life, and child development. So I have Codico here because I don't want to make a mistake with that. <laughs> okay, Um, she's been homeschooling for 20 plus years and she says she only has three years more to go before her last child will fly off. And um, that's something I really admire because it's very well planned. I hope that a lot of people will learn from her story. Hi, Maurice. Hello, May. Can you tell us more about you so that our listeners can get to know you even better? Okay. Um, to your listeners, hello also. So again, as May said, I'm Maurice. I've been homeschooling for 20 years now and I have three more years. Um, I have four wonderful children. Three are adults now. And my last child is uh, 13 years old. So, um, can you tell us a little more about your setup? Um, okay, so we are doing an eclectic type of homeschooling. So you're so familiar with the Charlotte Mason, with the unit study method. So I do eclectic. Eclectic means it's a combination of many different methods that you can use so i use different method for different subject because i really pattern those method depending on the learning styles of my children so that's yeah. how we do it can you tell us a little more about your children because i'm curious because you said you pattern them according to your child's personality yeah. and learning style so could you tell us more about that okay so for my eldest she's kind of introvert and she likes words so i used book heavy on words Mm-hmm. You know, so that includes also she's introvert. So I did more of introspective type of projects. Mm-hmm. So normally I use the books, but for projects I make my own, and wow. for some exams I make my own. So if you like essay, okay, I'll bombard you with essay. Yeah, this is Sophia, okay. and my second Emilio. He's a boy. He's uh, he's a very easygoing guy. He he yeah. studies lying down, sitting on yoga balls. <laughs> oh, yeah em- embracing or carrying a puppy that's how he is so definitely if your child is like that you won't get a uh, book heavy on words mm-hmm. i chose easy ones fun looking books with drawings and his project also is not essay definitely i'll mm-hmm. encourage him to do projects using minecraft for example okay oh, yeah. comics Mm-hmm. Yeah, comic related activity so that's how he is and for the third Louisa mm-hmm. extrovert siya. so again I did not use books heavy on words instead it's like more on the side of Emilio easy to do books but she's into singing and art so medyo artistic yung projects niya not so much essay not so much on the digital side, but more on the, the lap booking if you're familiar with it. Parang scrapbooking approach siya. Mm-hmm. Okay. Kasi mas ma- artful siya. So the last is Nicolas. He is 13. So medyo, I went back to Sophia's style. They are the same. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, so every book that I sold in the past, I'm buying it again. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so ngayon, I'm going back. I'm using my strategy with Sophia for my last son. So it's like talagang ping pong, diba? parang pasa pasa lang. Oh, bag, ibang, ibang bata, ibang project, totally new one. That's why I'm telling parents that there's really no veteran eh, because every year is new in homeschooling because your child changes every year. So you cannot stick to one style. I don't know if somebody asked me or I saw it in one of our homeschool communities. She asked how 
you find a child's learning style. So does it change every year, like you said, or is it just like um, because they're growing? Yeah, it changes. Not necessarily every year, but I think it has something to do with the development of the child. So, yeah, there was a time, Sophia, I, as I mentioned, my eldest, she's heavy on words. So, I, I began to use books, na, thick science books, heavy on words. But one day, she came to me and said, you know, ma, she said sorry. And then she said that for one month, she's not been studying. And I didn't know because she's, she's I think she's in her teens. And I allowed her to study on her own in a room because she said she wants it quiet and so she said so what did you do for one month i was just staring at my book so i think we should just be constantly in communication with them because they change so parang during that time sinabi niya na there's exhaustion on her part so again the books yeah that's when i i told you i, I keep on selling so i sold those books again look for another material that will give her encouragement again and motivation to study and same with Louisa before, we've been doing scrapbook. And sometime in her life when she was older, she told me, I don't like scrapbooking anymore. Ah, nice. Yeah, so I have to change again. It's a constant right. change every year. So it really takes a relationship, I know. Exactly. I really, no, if you don't have that kind of relationship, at, at least, you know, like uh, a certain depth in your mm-hmm. relationship with your children, for them to open up to you. Would you say that as they grow and uh, they, they appreciate the homeschool setup? Yeah. I think with my children, parang they do kasi wala silang choice. <laughs> 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 like hitting aside. Yeah, they appreciate it because they can feel and they can tell the difference. Mm. It's like in the house, there's no limitation. Ah, this is a safe yes. place for them. Na parang there's it's chaotic outside, but but when they are home, mm-hmm. they can do everything. It's because I've laid out the foundation. This is who I want you to be. These are the values mm-hmm. that I want you to keep. And then after that, you're on your own. There's not much rules, so they enjoy that freedom. But siguro I got that love for freedom sa UP. <laughs> kaya when I had my <laughs> when I had my home, parang I don't want to establish a lot of rules because it's, it's kind of confusing. Right? Mm, yes. And then if come to think of it, the children will be homeschooled and staying in the house for so many years. Tapos I will put so much limitations. So, How do you balance that with structure? Because a lot of families are advised to put a structure in their homeschooling. Although for our family, it doesn't really apply that much. I mean, we do have structure, but not in the same sense. But how do you balance your principle on not putting too much rules and restrictions with uh, putting a structure in your homeschooling okay so my structure is simple in the beginning we have a goal ah. like what yeah my goal we have a goal and then I, I, we told our kids that first the goal will begin from the parents from the couple i asked my husband what what's our goal and then he mentioned uh, just to live life to the fullest Oh, I love that. So, so yeah. sabi ko, yeah, so live life to the fullest and then what? Because if you think about it, they might say, oh, so we're so free, we can do everything. But you, ha- you are living life to the fullest. And along with that, I paired it with a set of values. Like, for example, a kindness, respect, fear of the Lord. So connect the two and there you have it. So you can do whatever you want, but there should be respect. You can wear what you want, respect the place where you're going. You can speak up, but be kind with your words. So so there's a lot of room for them to move under that umbrella. Mm-hmm. So parang so parang you can really they they were really able to spread their wings. So you just have to be intentional and you have to say it, you have to discuss it in the family. I remember the verse in the Bible that says, Jesus came so we may live our life to the full. Yeah, I think it's oh, John 10.10. 10, John 10.10. 10. Yeah, so I'm not very good with I'm not knowing where it is. I'm just, you know, I just remember the verses and more of the words part. But I will put that in the description box later. I always do. No matter when I mention this verse. 
just so we have the proper verse with the correct uh, wordings in it. Okay. Okay. So, um, speaking of, like you said that you have a goal. So, did you have a specific vision when you started out? Or do these visions change every year? Yeah. I When I started, I was... Bata pa ako nun eh. So, I will admit, it's kind of shallow. Parang, I just want my children not to experience my childhood days because it's really exhausting. It's so stressful and I can feel it now. Parang, parang I, I was saying, I really did not like school that time. Parang you're there to compete, to survive, but I was not there to learn. So, sabi ko, sabi ko, so... I just wanted them to be confident. Mm-mm. And then after some time, because of parenting seminars, I learned that I have to add more. So mm-hmm. siguro, as I mature also, and I see the need, sinasabay mo rin naman from, based from what you see outside. So parang, oh, there's an incident like this. So aside from being confident, I have to teach you to be resilient also. So as the years goes on, nadadagdagan siya. Oh, naalala ko kasi sinabi yan ni Eileen. When I interviewed her, we talked about the gap year. That specific part of the preparation, and I think character comes with it, no? Yeah. You have that same principle, that character goes first before anything else. Yes, exactly. Actually, you know, ne- although on my first year, nasabi ko I was so shallow, my intention then was just to finish the textbook. After learning that... Have you ever finished textbooks? Uh, never. <laughs> <laughs> Never. That's why it's so, you know, it's not satisfying at all. Every year, it's not. And then you're tired, you're stressed, and then after what happened, wala. Diba? Well, before I remember, hindi rin naman natatapos ng teachers yung, yeah. yung books, honestly. Diba? Yeah. Same so, so, Same. So sabi ko rin parang, why? So again, I went back to the whys. And then, you know, after learning that, academics was never a part of my goal. It was never. So now, my, my, my children are in college. One is graduated. Pero parang, it was never my goal na, oh, you have to be an honor student because we have to prove that because homeschoolers ka. Parang, it's, it was never my goal. Parang, I, I was just saying, sige, just, just go out and have fun. Uh-oh. Actually, yun lang ang sinasabi ko sa kids ko. Have fun. Yes, yes. I tell that to my kids. So um, <laughs> you mentioned something about um, you. You also noticed that a lot of new homeschoolers are more focused on the academics. Yes. Uh, could Could you uh, expound more on <clears throat> that and how you feel about it? Yeah. Every time I've I'm searching or browsing our FB group, it makes me sad that parents are so stressed. So, yeah. parang, they're looking at the wrong direction, eh. Yes, um, yes. And I understand because this is a difficult path to take. Yes, we have to yes. prove so many things. And in the Philippines, grade is so important. So, we have yes, to prove yes. that to ourselves. Wow. We, have, we have to prove that decision to the world that, hey, I made the right decision. Therefore, <laughs> we will become honor students. It's yeah. like that. So, you know, each time, it's like, you know, the need to to tell each of that parent na, hey, don't, mm-hmm. hey, don't. That's not it. That's not the point. You're missing the yeah. point. Yeah. So, yeah, they're missing the point. That's so actually, parang, you know, my concern that they will miss the benefits that come with yeah. schooling your child because you're focusing on the wrong things exactly uh-huh. but i but hope not, the parents not, won't... Not academics are not really important yeah say for us then i think a lot of people misconstrue that we do not put premium on the academics we do uh think that it is important to be educated in these things but it is not the main thing in home exactly yes yes um if if we can also say this that you use academics as a tool to reach the goal. Yes. So again, I'm back to the goal. If you want to live a happy life as a doctor, use your textbook, use academics to reach your goal. Yes. It's not finishing all the books. In fact, knowing that, having that in mind, also helped me with my budgeting. 
Because if, for example, my child wanted to be a doctor, I'll spend money on books in science, activities in science. Yes, yes. But maybe I'll study, not even study less, but I can, you know, I can spend less in language books. Yes. I can even use free sites for uh, how to write good essays. You know, so again, go ba going back to the goals, it's really your your guide. Oh, I met I met two of your kids, Emilio and Luisa. And Luisa, yeah. yeah. And I thought now Luisa worked with Pablo, but it was it was Emilio who mm -hmm. worked with my son in a play. Did he pursue theater? Ah, uh, yeah, for grade eleven and twelve. Okay. Yes, and now that he's in college. He has he, he has the option of pursuing, but I, I think they changed their minds. But uh -huh. they still yeah they still do acting on the side. They still mm -hmm. do they they still perform. Okay, but um, where is he now? What is what is he taking now? Just so our <laughs> listeners to have a clearer picture of where a family that does not really focus much on academics can go. Actually, it's a joke in our group that my kids are majoring in MAPE. Eh? And true indeed, in their 11, in grades 11 and 12, yeah. they took uh, theater arts. Yeah. But in college, they shifted. Although it's not really far, uh -uh. it's still connected. They, they yeah. chose mass comm. Uh -uh. Uh, Luisa is in Ateneo taking up comm, and she's planning yeah. to major in PR and advertising. Mm -hmm. Emilio is in Ateneo also, Mascom, and he's planning on taking production yeah, yeah. As, as his major. Yeah, which so is it's still, good. yeah, people yeah. pa din. It's a good direction actually because one of the things that I've been teaching Pablo, mm -hmm. because he started as an actor in theater, and I was telling him, if you want to last in, the, in this industry, you have to look into other other uh, roles mm -hmm. because being an actor will, might not suffice because not everybody Lea Salonga who gets to go to UK and um, star in a production like Miss Saigon mm -hmm. I mean it's possible but it doesn't always happen so you mm -hmm. have to have other you have to look into other possibilities and how you can have longevity in this industry mm -hmm. which is to look into production work directing or mm -hmm. acting is, is Emilio thinking of producing or directing? Um, he's more on working behind the stage, so he could. I think I don't think we've wasted our time and money with theater arts during their senior because all their decisions now is a product of their experiences in the past. So, in his senior years, yeah. he was exposed to the works of to the workings of the director, mm. uh, stage managers, and it inspired mm -hmm. him. Same with Louisa. Mm -hmm. You know, the, my daughter is a hustler. You know what's nice? Um, she now, parang she has this desire to work. So, gusto niya kumita mm -hmm. talaga. So, she's doing mm -hmm. that. She's still, she's a party host now. So, okay. yeah, during, over the weekends, okay. yeah, she gets gig as Nakakatuwa nga eh. Sometimes she's Belle, sometimes she's Cinderella. Ah, okay. And they That's sing. Kind of, ano? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. What company is this? It's Madison. Ah, yes. I'm familiar no. with Madison. No. So I'm, I'm interested in Sophia because I read about her story. She yeah. was a shy girl, but she's gone to France to study mm -hmm. Independently from the family, because she's the only one who went to France, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then she she's traveled eleven countries, and I think she's is she the one who's uh bound for Spain? Yeah, she's leaving September Italy? twenty. Sophia, malapit na less than a month. So tell us more about Sophia's joining. Okay, Sophia is my experiment number one. <laughs> uh, I started homeschooling her when she was four. <laughs> She's really a shy kind na up to the point of ask, me asking my teacher na, Teacher, can you please check? Is there something wrong with my daughter? Kasi she's super shy. Alam mo yung parang as a mom, during that time, I'm naiingit ako sa ibang moms kasi why are your children so alive and active? So, sabi ko, my child, nakasiksik siya sa akin. 
Ah, okay. Yes, kaya this is one learning that I really want to tell the parents na if you have a, a shy child and then somebody will discourage you from pursuing homeschooling, my daughter is is an example. Diba? I pursued and there were times na one time I had to really force her to join a theater arts class because yeah, kasi I really want her to bloom, to mingle with other people and it worked. Mm-hmm. She yeah she performed well there and she even attended our, uh, Ryan Kayabiad Music School. Oh, and, oh, yeah, wow. she, she performed solo there during the recital. So yeah, uh, that's how she came out of her shell. And then after that, uh, in college, when she entered Ateneo, during the orientation, they were told that there's a program called Junior Term Abroad. Mm-hmm. So from her first year, her eye was really on that program. Ah. So you know that's what I'm saying. I we we don't force our children. We don't dream for them. I didn't say that. The focus mo is get Latin honors. Hindi, her focus is I want to go abroad. So yung grades niya for as long as it's it will pass during the screening. That's what she'll do. Mm-hmm. So and then she passed. So the that uh, program is uh, for example uh you will choose your course and the corresponding course and then you'll choose a particular country mm-hmm. so if you're mascom get a mascom let's say from from france and then there's a university there and the good thing is you are still paying the ateneo tuition fee so mm-hmm. ang mag-iiba lang is of course expenses your living expenses abroad mm-hmm. so she chose lille france it's a very cute place in france Mm-hmm. Ang, yeah, it's so cozy. Ang, ang maganda okay. din. So she studied there for six months. Yun. And then she said, uh, studying there is so easy. It's like one essay is the project for the entire term. Parang wow. ganun lang. Yeah, so she had more time to travel. So during her break, she would travel. She went to, to Italy, to uh, I think Denmark, Poland, mm-hmm. the Netherlands. Wow. Germany, Finland. So sometimes she'll do it alone. Sometimes with her, the friends from the university she's into. So kaya, you know, her. I'm so happy with her experience because it debunked all the homeschooling myth of, you know, socially they will fail. Yeah. They cannot thrive in the real world. Yes, yes. Yeah, parang they are so you know, nakakulong in the house so they cannot yes, deal yes, with uh-oh. matters on their own. But she did. I did not tell her how to do things, how to book tickets. Actually, if you bring me there, I don't think, I will really have a hard time. I won't. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's really, oh, depending yeah, kasi, on the alam mo, the booking of the bus, she had to choose which one is cheaper, a bus or a plane. If I go here, what time will I be there? And then, you know, yung lakas ng loob na sometimes she will walk at dawn kasi dumadating yung train in a parang secluded area. Just, you know, mga train, darkness, and it's cold. Tapos siya lang. And she did it. I, I didn't receive crying at night. Na I'm scared. Mm-hmm. Wala eh. All I can think of tell, her telling me is, ako parang I want to save on food. Kaya pumayat siya dun eh. Kasi... <laughs> Sure. <laughs> yeah, para so nabuo yata siya sa eggs and pasta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it worked. She survived. So how does it feel? You know, like she's your first daughter. She's your mm-hmm. first child. Mm-hmm. She used to be with you because you were homeschooling her the entire time before she went to senior high school. Mm-hmm. Correct? Ah, no. She didn't take senior high. So from... Ah, okay. Wow. Hindi na niya inabutan yung K-12 eh. So ah, after okay. fourth year high school... Ateneo. She she, that's why when she went there, she's just 18. Ah, so how oh. does it feel as a parent to release your child? You know, as country. Uh-huh. As a parent, you can really tell when your children are ready. Para ako kasi, one of, again, my goal is once they're, I'm done with them, they're ready for the world. So yeah. kasi ano kami eh, very vis- I'm a very visual person. So parang mm-hmm. I imagine my children as my package, parang factory line. It's now ready, quality control na. I'll put them in a box. 
signed, sealed, and ready to be delivered. So that's how I imagine my kids to be. So parang in all aspects, ready ka na ba? We cannot prepare them for the exact challenges, right? We can just equip them with tools on how to deal with them. So that's how I, I homeschool. I really did not filter a lot of, you know, sometimes maybe some parents will say, don't tell it na, kasi it's kind of negative, stressful for them. But ako, if I see it happening, and there's a big chance of them experiencing that outside, why not discuss it at home? Where do you get your confidence? As, uh, releasing your children. You know, again, uh, let's go back to the Bible. Um, I've read this in Psalm. Again, I keep on forgetting the verse. Pareho tayo. Pero it's like, it's, it says there na, if God plant something in your heart, he'll guide you through it. Mm. So parang ako, if, if there is something that I feel like I needed to do, and then you know naman na parang it's a calling, parang I know na behind my back is there's a blessing from, from God. So I just pursue doing it. Kasi I know naman na I wanted to do something good, so it must be from God, and therefore I'm guided. Mm. But of course, because I have a husband, yun lang yun, it's, let's make it simple. Homeschooling is between the parents and God. The yeah. wife, the husband, and God. Wala nang iba. So yun lang, if I have something in mind, I'll tell it to my husband. And if he says it's good, then you pray about it and then proceed. Yun lang, I don't ask people. Kaya bang ba? Sorry. <laughs> I have those also. But we do have, like, we do seek counsel once in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've also learned to go to God first when it comes to our children. Mm-hmm. And of course, there are people who speak life to us. They really bring us back to the Word. When you look through the years, what do you think were the things that you did right and the things that you could have done that? Um, with what I did right, I think um, I can see it now. Eh? You know, I can see that they are confident, they are God fearing, they are kind, they are respectful. So I think with what I did right was to focus in each of them and see them individually. It's like alam parang I have to work on this child, and then when I see that this child is done, I can mm-hmm. proceed to the next. Parang, you know, I celebrated their individuality. I think that's yeah. what I did right. Parang I, it's so easy to say, okay, this is our, this is my style, and it won't change. It's the same for all. But yeah. no, I know it's difficult. Parang kano skit so means <laughs> you have so many personalities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But ganon eh, that's how it should be done. Yeah. Na parang what worked for this child won't work for the next child so I, parang, yeah. I think that's the point of my homeschooling i celebrated their individuality it's really a celebration parang the miss the you know their shortcomings their achievements mm-hmm. it's part of it's part of who they are so and you know, that's the nice thing that's what we did with the children in this house it's like they're free-spirited people they can talk about so many things you know Parang our house, hindi lang siya resting place. It's a safe place for them where they can talk about everything, mm-hmm. where they can be who they want to be. Yes. So yes. I think that's the best thing that we've done in the house. Eh. Walang, I think siguro may secret sila, mm-hmm. pero I respect that. But in most of the cases, situation in their lives, we are very much aware of. Yes, yes. No, it's the same with us. Oh, and it, if you yeah, want and that kind of family and that kind of home, I think it's safe to say that it will be the kind of home that they will start themselves. Yeah. So your next question is, what could I have done better? Again, hindi siya academics. It's more on, I hope I was a relaxed mom when they were younger. Meaning, I hope <laughs> I spent time playing with them. Uh-uh. Yeah, I hope uh, that I cleaned the house less. I minded the mess less. Because mm-hmm. going back, yun lang yung naisip ko ngayon eh, na parang I wish I could have created more memories. Mm-hmm. Yun. Yun lang eh. It's, Pero naman, nakabawi ka naman, di ba? I hope nakabawi. Pero I miss the mga noise ba? So, to the parents, enjoy the noise, enjoy the mess. 
<laughs> totoo yan, totoo. You said that, look, 252 is your go-to verse in homeschool. And I'd want you to, to share more about that because I think that a lot of parents must also understand this part in homeschooling. Look, 252 says, and Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, stature and, and, and yeah. Okay, Um. first I would like to thank my very first uh, homeschool provider, the TMA, at uh, the Master's Academy Homeschool, because this verse really did not come from me. This was taught to us during one of the orientations, and in every orientation, actually, they mention this. And it's actually, if, if you think about it, it's so complete. It's every homeschooler's guide. No matter how much you search sa mga website there, it's not complete there. Eh. If you think about it, this is so encompassing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if I were to, to to discuss this one by one, mm-hmm. so Jesus grew in wisdom. So, mm-hmm. so syempre, goes without saying, wisdom is academics. Diyan po mapasok mm-hmm. academics. Of course, wisdom is different from knowledge. Pero pasok yeah, na rin natin yeah. doon. So wisdom is dyan yung curriculum natin, the academics, mm-hmm. the critical thinking, that's where the ayun, yung focus natin ngayon. It's the study matters. So that's where I that's how I apply the verse. Everything is under wisdom. So it this is actually a checklist in homeschooling. So if you are homeschooling, go to wisdom. Are you covering all those aspects under wisdom? Do you have the books? Do you discuss uh, important matters in the home, current events? Do you do that? Do you talk about character also? So check. So and then move to the next. Some homeschoolers kasi stop there. So with this verse, it guides you know, may tatlo pa. So the second is stature. How are they? Are they healthy? Or are they just studying because you got a lot of books? So, yeah. kumusta naman yung physic nila, their well-being? So, mm-hmm. you will be reminded that, oh wait, I have to, you know, engage my child in sports. Mm-hmm. So, that's where MAPE comes in. Yeah. So, uh, enroll them in music, arts. And uh, you don't have to enroll actually, but just provide that at home. Give them... Yes, yes. Yeah, ako, I really make sure I try na one child knows an instrument. Mm-hmm. Kahit, kahit simple lang, then at least all of my children went through art school. And then PE, hindi ko na in-insist kasi not all my kids are, hindi sila active. Eh. Uh-huh. Yeah, only one is a dancer. Mm-hmm. Actually, magiging two yata. So yun, that's PE. So go to the third guide. In Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, favor with God. So how are they spiritually? Do you also discuss this at home? Do you go to church? Do you have church groups? Do you have are you engaged in ministries? So if you're the if you're doing that, you're good. And then you go to the last. And Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, favor with God and men. How is your child? Do they have friends? Mm-hmm. So kaya kami kinakarir namin ng birthday party. So, my children were young. Invite us in birthday party. Surely, we'll, we will be there. <laughs> so, I really make it a point if there's an invitation, we go. So, to the parents, don't be so busy for parties. It's, it's yeah. important. It's important yeah. in our yeah. lives as yeah. homeschoolers. So, yeah. events like that, go. Parang, you don't choose academics over mm-hmm. family events. Yeah. Because you, you, you have to check those, you checklist na yon. If you're four over four, then you're doing good. So that's wow. how Look 252 works. It's a lot of things to reflect on, actually. I was thinking of um, making it a poster here in our house and put it up mm-hmm. just to remind our family because it's really, really a great person, a great explanation. It made me stop and think about our own journey. Do we check all the boxes? Which of these things do we need to work on mm. at this point? So thank you for sharing that. Um, we've come to the end part of our interview. And as we have any chapter for our uh, newer homeschool families, and even to the seasoned families, is there anything that you'd like to 
to communicate with them. Okay, so can I summarize it into three points? Okay. Okay, so the first point is in each for the homeschoolers out there, you have to remember that it should be parenting first before homeschooling. You cannot homeschool without being a parent. So parents first, mean, meaning um, we are not teachers kasi hindi lang tayo academics. So mm -hmm. always check your child's heart before the beginning of your study sessions. Yeah. We can feel if they are ready to study or if, or if there's something that's you know, parang preventing them from studying for the day. You ask. We always do a happiness check each okay. time. Are they still happy with the way we are homeschooling? Mm -hmm. So yeah, parenting first. And of course, parent tayo, we can be tired sometimes. It's for us also. If yeah. you feel like, you know, you're tired to teach for the day, then take a break. Yeah. Yeah. And then second is, again, I keep on repeating, let's have, you have to set your goals first. Because if you, if you don't have a goal, you'll end up following so many and you end up tired yes, and confused. Yes. So yes. stick to that goal. Yeah. And that goal should be done by your family there should be a goal that the family will follow and there should be a goal for every child so okay. two sets of goals and then i think the last is partner with your children mm, I, like I know we, yeah we have providers for the indie kahit wala lagi tayo nagarap who can i partner with i need a friend we keep we keep on basing the child our child is our partner you can yeah. ask you can even ask your little ones, what do you want to study today? Do you like to read this book? It's partnership happening. Because if you start that, a relationship with your child, na, hey, it's not mommy, teacher, you as a student, and you just obey. If you started the atmosphere of partnership, and then maybe, siguro, at, er, at an early year of your homeschooling, your child can be deciding on their own. And it will really help us a lot. Right? Kasi yung iba, my child is still dependent on me because we did not train them. So mm -hmm. partnering with your children is one way to, to bringing up children who are decision makers also, confident children. So you know, those three, just that I think that's what I learned through the years. Mm -hmm. I hope the parents learned from yes, <laughs> to everything. Yes, yes. I, sorry, natigilin ako kasi I was thinking to myself, am I doing all three now? What are the things, you know? So much to reflect and so much substance mm -hmm. coming from you, Maris. And I really, really appreciate this this discussion. Natututo talaga ako. Well, and thank you, May, because your questions are also, you know, it's for me, it, it really helped me to look back. I love your questions. <laughs> I know that you are offering coaching one to one. Mm -hmm. Is it one on one? Um, no, I did not put numbers anymore. Ah, but okay, it's so, just coaching, yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. you do coaching for homeschooling families on their first few years, a few months of homeschooling? Yeah, actually, I started it before the pandemic, but ah. I, uh, oh, oh, I stopped na then. Because I remember, yung question mo kasi before, what do you feel when parents are like this? So they are the inspiration. So, I can easily do seminars, but my in my coaching, I want to really do a one on one. Although, yeah, medyo, it's difficult because eh, there are so many homeschooling parents, but I have to go one by one or by tens. Because eh, that's what I really want. Eh. I want parents to be able to speak up, to be personal about it, because homeschooling is so personal. So yes, if I, yes, if, yes. yes, so if I can reach out to every parent. That's yeah. my vision eh? kasi I just want to share what I did and how it helped me and my yeah. children. So the, that's my coaching is um, I do one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do one-on-one -on, -one on a per session basis or for it's a three-month long coaching mm -hmm. just so I can help them establish their homeschooling lifestyle for the first three months. And then I also do a small group coaching. Uh -huh. That's good. So I'm going to put all the details for the one-on-one -on -one coaching with Marise in the description box and in the comment section when I post this um, interview. So for those who are interested, who are just new to homeschooling and just trying to feel your way, need some help and some mentorship, this is the right person to go to. 
So just um, check the description box for her contact details. Thank you so much, Maurice, for gracing our homeschool podcast. I am blessed. Thank you, May. Sharing and My I pleasure. pray that so many parents will find this discussion helpful and that it would enlighten many many of us, not just those who are new to it, but even those who have been doing it for quite some time. There are so many reflection points that would help us in our homeschool journeys. Thank you so much. You're welcome, May. Thank you also.